uh, good evening students uh, today we are going to start in animal kingdom the phylum platyhelminthes so so far we have completed the phylum porifera we have completed this phylum cylindrata and we also done with the uh, phylum tenophora so today uh, this session we are going to complete the platyhelminthes and the nematyhelminthes and we will be observing certain characteristics the common characteristic among these worms okay these are the platyhelminthes nematyhelminthes are basically worms there are a common characteristics uh, between them and there are some peculiar characters over there now the final we will be comparing with the previous phylums that is porifera uh, cylindrata and tenophora okay now let's begin now phylum Platyhelminthes. So these are called the flatworms. Okay, the platyhelminthes are called flatworms. So these are the dorsoventrally flattened body. So they have the dorsoventral flattened body. Dorso ventral flattened body. Okay, so all they are, they show the first time. So whenever we have seen in porifera, the mostly asymmetrical, but in cylindrates and tenophore, they show the radial symmetry. And this is the first group of animals they started showing the bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry. Very unique character. So you need to remember the phylum with bilateral symmetry, the platyhelminthes. And they also, the first group of triploblastic animals. Triploblastic animals. Okay, and this is the first group they started showing organ level of organization. So we have seen the porifera, they are showing only cellular level of organization, whereas cylindrata and tenophora, they started showing the tissue level of organization, and this is the group. The first time they are showing the organ level of organization because we are going to see certain organs in this group. Okay. And more important, they started showing the cephalization in this group. Cephalization. The formation of the head also seen in this group. Okay. They are acylomates. Acylomates. Okay. So these are the very important uh, features of the platyhelminthes. Most of the times they will be giving in uh, statements like the following uh, example is true uh, in case of, okay, like uh, bilateral symmetry, they will give the triploblasty, argyl level of organization uh, and the acylomates. So you need to understand the statement correct and you should have a knowledge on the examples then only you can able to answer such type of questions. Now, so very important, so the cavity between the gut and body wall, we call it as coelom and this coelom is filled by special cells, okay, the coelom, which is filled by the special cells called as parenchymal cells. Very important thing, this is you need to remember, they are origin by the mesoderm, they are mesodermal origin. Okay, very important. Though they are not having any coelom, but the between the gut and the body wall, there are cells, okay, filled by the special cells, we call it as parenchymal cells, very important. 
now moving on to the general characters so these are the very unique characters which is exhibited by the plantae helminthes for stem bilateral symmetry triploblastic uh, and the organ level of organization we are going to see certain organs okay we have started seeing the first time eyes in this particular group of animals and the cephalization also and they are truly acelomates okay now we we'll move on to the the general characteristics of the platyhelminthes okay now the habitat of this platyhelminthes they are mostly endoparasites okay habitat is endoparasitic today we are going to study other phylum also the nematyhelminthes there are also major majority of them endoparasites a very few are free living example is planaria planaria we are going to study this planaria the scientific name of planaria is dugesia dugesia okay very important now in case of this platyhelminthes okay the digestive system is absolutely absent in case of endoparasites so only in the platyhelminthes in nematyhelminthes that digestive system is present but in case of uh, endoparasites the digestive system is absolutely absent digestive system is absent they do not require digestive system because they are mostly endoparasites so uh, they take the ready made nutrients from the gut okay that's the reason they don't require any digestive system they take ready made oxygen they take ready made nutrients they take uh, ready made circulatory fluid so that's the reason they don't doesn't take uh, doesn't require any digestive system in free living there is a digestive system but that is incomplete digestive system however the digestive system started evolving with this group of animals that is platyhelminthes platyhelminths so digestive system incomplete means there is a anterior opening mouth but there is no mouth but no anus no posterior opening the only single opening okay now we call them as the blind sac blind sac we are going to see how this structure in case of free living forms and it is present in only free living forms that the incomplete digestive system okay now excretion excretion Uh, mainly through body wall through body wall and there are uh, the specialized cells which are involving in this type excretion the cells are called as flame cells the flame cells are present in the body wall and these cells are responsible for the excretion and the cells the flame cells is also called called as selenocytes 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 or selenocytes we can call them okay so the digestion there is an anterior opening mouth and in case of both the endoparasites and the uh, free living forms the excretion is happening through the body wall and there are specialized cells on the body wall we call them as flame cells and uh, we can also call them as selenocytes selenocytes and these flame cells are the the primary structures in case of the kidneys okay the flame cells the slowly evolved into the uh, nephridia nephridia to the mesonephridia then the metanephridia so that's the reason we call them as protonephridia proto nephridia very important so all these peculiar characters we have started seeing in this phylum platyhelminthes the digestive system in free living forms 
but only single opening incomplete digestive system okay and the excretion is happening through the flame cells we call it as selenocytes and the protonephridia okay and respiration circulation is absolutely absent in case of endoparasites okay because they take because they are mostly endoparasites so they doesn't require any uh, any respiratory structures to get the oxygen because they are always in the endoparasites so whatever the oxygen take from the blood from the host that is utilized by the parasites okay now the nervous system nervous system in this platforms okay that is more moderately developed it is not so complex like cockroaches and all but somehow moderately evolved i can write like this evolved in previous phylum in cylindrata we have started seeing there is a coordination started and there is a nerves they arranged in a manner manner we call them as nerve plexus we have seen but when coming to the flatty platy helminthes the nerve fibers okay connected with each other nerve fibers connected with each other with transverse nerve fibers transverse commissures transverse commissures so for example these are the nerve fibers so they are connected with transverse commissures so how it looks is it not looking like ladder so that is the reason the nervous system of platy helminthes we are calling as ladder like nervous system very important so in case of free living that planaria and digitia we can observe one pair of eyes very important you need to remember there is a ladder like nervous system and one pair of eyes we can see in the planaria okay now we'll move on to the the next system that is reproductive system so reproductive system in case of free living forms it is asexual reproductive system okay it happens through both asexual and sexual reproduction okay and examples are planaria planaria asexual reproduction by simple fragmentation and sexual reproduction happens through gamete formation they are mostly uh, hermaphrodites hermaphrodites means they are bisexual rights they are bisexual okay and except cystosoma hematobium so cystosoma hematobium is monosexual to soma hematobium it is a monosexual but others all the endoparasites they are uh, hermaphrodites are bisexual fertilization is indirect fertilization sorry fertilization is internal development is indirect so indirect development means there is a larval stage okay so what are the larval stages they are having the many larval stages like exocanthine exocanthine and cysty circus cysty circus 
so these are the two important larval stages there are many larval stages so having many larval stages in their life cycle we call them as polyembryony and this polyembryony also we have started seeing first time in this phylum platyhelminthes there are many peculiar characters which we observe first time in evolution if you see the entire animal kingdom right from porifera to the cortex these are the first characters we observe in this platyhelminthes okay now let us move on the classification of this platyhelminthes so the platyhelminthes are classified based on the habitat they are having okay based on habitat and if you see porifera they have classified uh, based on the endoskeleton they are having and cylindrata if you see they are based on the body forms and the tinofora based on the uh, the flagella they have but uh, in case of this based on habitats one is tubularia tubularians so these are the free forms free forms so you will understand much better why we are calling them as the tubularian once we draw the structure of the planaria Okay, the examples are planaria. Examples are planaria. Scientific name is Dugisia. Okay, and the next example is convoluta. Convoluta. These are two examples for tubularia class. and the next class is strematoda the class strematoda so they are they require more than two hosts two hosts so example is fasciola hepatica fasciola hepatica we call it as liver fluke and the next example is cystosoma hematobium so this is black fluke so these are very important examples as per your ncrt and the third class is cestoda example is tinea solium a form we can also call them as spore tape form Okay, so now we'll understand the two examples. One is the tinea solium, and another one planaria. So we will understand much better their internal structures too. Okay. Tinea solium. the common name we call it as four tape worm so it exactly looks like uh, the tailor tape it's a very long ribbon type tape it is digenetic means it required two hosts to complete their life cycle one is the man and the second is the pig 
okay so why we are calling as man as a primary host because it completes the sexual reproduction in man so that's the reason pig is a secondary host okay now the disease it causes to the man we call it as kiniasis kiniasis okay now it infects through when people are eating uh, not properly cooked pork meat okay now let us understand the structure of this tinea solium the tinea solium has three parts on their body okay so we divide into head neck region head neck and the strobium let us understand this let me draw this this is the head part and there is a narrow neck this part we call it as in head region it is also known as colex head is also known as colex and this part is known as neck it is also known as prostrobium then it leads to the long ribbon like structure so in this strobium this part we call it as from here to entire part we call it as strobium and strobium has segments like this segments they are having they are having segment we don't call them as the segmented body i'll tell you why why we don't call as the segments this is very important point you need to understand this though they are having the segments but we don't call them as a metamerism these are different from the metamers which is there with the earthworms okay now head region there are four suckers okay so it is exactly on four sides we can able to see only the one side one sucker in the middle we can see and we can see half sucker from side this side and this is a half sucker so the back one more sucker will be there on the top there are two rows of hookers hooks are there so these are hooks these are suckers so with the help of hooks it adhered the attached to the uh, intestine where with the help of the suckers no it sucks the blood from host body and this part is a neck part okay and actually this part neck part is developing the strobiums the neck part is actually develops the the upcoming strobium okay and these are the segments we call them as the proglites proglates they are proglates now these proglates okay the strobium has many different types of the proglates the first anterior part for example this much part is known as immature proglates Okay, this is immature proglottids. Means the the sex organs are immature; they don't doesn't produce any gametes over here. Over here, then followed by, for example, this much part, the middle part of this strobium, 
is called as mature proglycans so the last part though the terminal part of the strobium we call them as gravy proglycans so the proglycans are div divides into three types based on their maturity okay here the sex organs will immature and the slowly they mature here the fertilization will takes place okay the, the self fertilization and the internal proglycans the fertilization will happen and the mature you now fully fertilized eggs are uh, contains in gravy proglycans moment it goes up okay they detach these gravy proglycans detaches from the body and that process we call it as apolysis very important apolysis now these apolysis apolysis through proglycans uh, they eliminate through the fecal matter of the man okay so whenever this pigs eats the shit okay they enter into the digestive system of the pig and they travels through the circulatory system the finally they reaches the muscles of the pig muscles of pig so moment they reaches the muscles of the pig these proglycans okay they looks like you no know, the bumpy bumpy structures on the muscle of the pigs okay that's why we call it as mesial mesially pore we call them as mesially pork something having a bumpy structures on the meat we call them as the mesially pork meat so whenever the people are uh, taken this uh, mesially pork not properly cooked uh, meat so they started developing this tinea soria okay so that is a uh, uh, all about the tinea soria now let us see the free living forms of the platyhelminthes that is planaria or digestia because this is very important that this they started showing two important structures one structure we can see when we are seeing from on the dorsal side so head is a triangular shape and this is the body so this is the dorsal side see this uh, planaria is very transparent we can see the ladder like structure by naked eyes okay very beautiful and there is one pair on the anterior these are eyes we can see like this so <clears throat> whenever we are seeing on the ventral side ventral side in anterior part there is a tubular structure which is actually coming outside the body and this is called as blind sac blind sac it is also known as tubular pharynx tubular pharynx okay so very important structure and this is the first primitive structure of the digestive system in animal kingdom okay this is all about the platyhelminthes so please take 5 uh, minutes break now we'll start with uh, the next phylum that is ascii helminthes it is also known as nematy helminthes so ascii helminthes are nematy helminthes means they are round worms so earlier we have studied the phylum that is flat worms but these group of animals are round worms 
No, they are completely round. Now, they are mostly endoparasites. As like Platyhelminthes, these animals are also endoparasites. Very few are free living forms. So we can find these free living forms in uh, moist so so soils. So they damages the uh, roots of many plants, no? nematodes. Forms. Now, these they are also bilateral, bilateral, symmetrical, and they are triploblastic animals. So this is the first group we are saying that triploblastic animals. So the body parts are they originate from all three germ layers. This is the first group of triploblastic animals. Now, they show the pseudocelome, pseudocelomic animals. Okay? The pseudocelome means the mesoderm scatters into pouches in the middle or between the endoderm and the ectoderm. Okay? And the space between the gut space between gut and body wall is filled by pseudocelomic fluid very important it is not the empty space but the space is filled with the pseudocelomic fluid so it is very you know gelatinous liquid so that is the reason the body of these uh, round worms, it is not that kind of the tape worms. It easily bends. No, it is like hydrostatic uh, skeleton. The pseudocelomic fluid provides hydrostatic skeletal. Okay. So this is not the real skeletal system, but the liquid, a fluid which is present in the pseudocelomic cavity, uh, that is acting like a skeleton. So that is the reason we are calling them hydrostatic skeleton. Okay. The first time we are seeing the alimentary canal, the complete alimentary canal with the mouth and the posterior opening. That's why we call them as tube in tube organization. Tube in tube. They are tubes. Basically, they are round worms, they are tube like structures. In between, there is a tube. That's why we are calling as tube in tube. Okay, the first alimentary canal. Alimentary canal. And first time, we are seeing this also the organ system level of organization. So earlier phylum Platyhelminthes, we have just seen only organs, but here we are seeing organ system level of organization. And very important, this is organ system and the triploblastism, pseudocelomates, all this thing. Now, they started showing the sexual dimorphism. The male and females are different. Like human beings, these tiny round worms also started showing some external and internal differences between the male and female okay that we call it as sexual dimorphism okay now let us see the general characters okay the body wall the first body wall it has made by three layers body wall of the uh, round worms the outer layer is cuticle layer. Cuticle layer. Then the middle layer is epidermis. And this epidermis is made by the epithelial cells, but these, that, these cells are having the multinuclei. Very important point. Multinuclei epithelium can be seen in epidermis of the round box or nematodes. So this layer, we call them as syncytial epidermis. 
syncytial epidermis can be seen in nematodes nematicum this okay syncytial epidermis then the innermost is the muscular layer very important that we are seeing the body wall with the muscle okay the simple muscles they are having only longitudinal muscles the first time the body wall has in, having some kind, kind of muscles that is the longitudinal in upcoming phylum in annelida we started seeing the longitudinal as well as the circular muscles and in the body wall they started showing some pigment also in uh, coming phylum but these up to now ascalmen there is no pigmentation in the body wall there is no color hence we are not calling them as skin so whenever we want to call something as skin it should have certain pigments but this group they doesn't show uh, this uh, pigmentation now so let us understand the systems in this uh, nematic element is as i said as i told uh, they show se sexual dimorphism male and female are different let us draw the ascaris picture this is i am going to draw this uh, male male is slightly short and the posterior end is curved the female is long very long ascaris is long but if you see the vocal area is very very long it is 10 times longer than the male and this is the female this is female and this is male ascaris now they have a digestive system as i said complete digestive system an anterior opening we call it as mouth it is same in case of female also this opening okay <clears throat> but in uh, nematic helminth this di digestive system has mouth then muscular pharynx and no stomach please understand this this is the one group they doesn't have stomach in digestive system okay then it leads to non muscular intestine then it leads to cloaca in case of males male and anus in case of female this is very important when coming to the digestive system of nematic helminths we have seen mouth and towards the anterior end there are two openings so one opening in the main sorry there is one opening this is called the excretory pore excretory pore this is just outlet of excretion okay in case of males there is a posterior opening this opening we doesn't call as anus we call them as cloaca cloacal aperture in females towards the posterior end there is an opening this is called as female gonopore and the posterior opening is called as anus in case of females in case of males it is a common opening for digestive system as well as the reproductive system so generally the cloaca means the common opening for the digestive excretory and reproductive but in case of nematic helminths the males are having separate excretory pore here but this cloacal opening is 
common for digestive system and the reproductive system and the posterior end there is in the projections these are called as copulatory copulatory setae this is the external differences we can observe in the male and female okay there are differences in the openings so by seeing this female uh, gonopore we can easily identify whether it is a female or male okay there are internal differences also in the males there is only one pair of testes one pair of testes in case of males in females there are two pairs of ovaries so having only one set of uh, testes we call it as monarchy so having two sets of uh, ovaries we call them as didelphic didelphic sex organs okay so this is uh, something uh internally we can see this these kind of differences so this is very important the sexual dimorphism started seeing from the nematihelminth is there are external differences between the male and female and there are internal differences too okay now the excretion carries through the special structures in this group we call them as renex cells very important in case of platyhelminthes we have seen the uh, flame cells but in case of ascihelminthes there are renex cells very important structures okay the renex cells then the nervous system it is well developed nervous system is well developed so as i told you in the platyhelminth is the nervous system is moderately developed there is a nerves and they connected with the transverse commission it looks like ladder like ladder like nervous system we have seen but in case of this nematihelminth is there is so for example this is the this is the tube of alimentary canal you see this is this i said the tubular pharynx so around this tubular pharynx there is a nerve ring is formed we call them as circumpharyngeal circumpharyngeal nerve ring okay so there is a ring is formed so it has the anterior projections and posterior projection it went to the ventral side okay so you will be seeing all the nervous systems in annelida arthropoda mollusca the nerve cord is on the ventral side but in coming to the cortex the nerve cord on the dorsal side okay now we can start observing this ventral nerve cord this is very very important so the need they will be asking this kind of questions okay when we have started seeing the complete uh, digestive system and the well developed nervous system with the ventral nerve cord among invertebrates that is started in the nematihelminthes only okay now there are sense organs there are three types of sense organs we can find one is papillae papillae they are the tango receptors tango means the touch and feel receptors the second one is affix sorry it is amphix amphix are the chemo receptors they are present in the anterior part only 
and the third one is fast mix no fast mix are also chemo receptors but they are present on the posterior part so based on the fast mix are present or not we have classified entire nematodes into different classes okay now we'll move on to the next system that is a reproductive system so reproductive system we already told they show they start showing this sexual dimorphism so remember this is the first group they are exclusively from here from ascii helminthes to the cardids all they are show the sexual reproduction no more asexual reproduction so asexual reproduction is up to the platy helminthes only that to we'll see only in the free forms that planaria okay now the reproduction is sexual they show sexual dimorphism we have seen or uh, that with very good example how they show the uh, sexual dimorphism male and female are different now the fertilization is internal internal and development is indirect there are larval stages like rhabdity form there are many microphylaria many many larval stages uh, they show depending on the individuals and they are oviparous oviparous means they lay eggs viviparous means they directly give birth to the younger one majority of them ov viviparous in this group ov viviparous means the eggs are hatches inside the body okay let me write here eggs hatches inside the body so this is also very important ov viviparous animals are the nematic helminthes now we know that ascaris is causes disease we call it as ascariasis it is monogenetic uh, pathogen okay, parasite and it causes ascarias uh, symptoms like abdominal cramps okay uh, if very low level it doesn't show any symptoms but the high level of the count it causes the abdominal cramp and it leads to the bloody stools and all this thing okay and one of the important of this uh, the phylum they start this this is the group only they shows uteli uteli means so whenever they born the number of cells in that infant so till they die the number of the cells are same there is no addition of the cells there is no deletion of the cells the number of cells in the birth number of the cells in the birth remains constant that phenomena we call it as uteli okay and see this group animals they doesn't show any regeneration no regeneration in this group so planaria we have seen very great extent of the regeneration but this group there is no regeneration any parts they lost they lost okay that is all about now the classification we'll see so classification based on the fast mix 
the sensory structures on the posterior side they are the chemoreceptors so based on the phasmids they there are two classes one is a phasmida class a phasmida and phasmida so a phasmida includes trichinella trichinella okay and trichorus trichorus and phasmida include ascaris lumbricoides and enterobius vermicularis vermicularis this is b it is commonly called as pin or seat worm and ankylostoma is called as hookworm and bucararia bronchi causes phylariasis okay this is phylaria okay these are the examples very important So these are the unique structures. So it's a summary. So platy helminthes and the nematy helminthes are basically worms. The majority are endoparasites, and very few are the free living forms. Okay. So in platy helminthes, we started seeing this uh, diploblastic organ level of organization, and we have seen many structures. You know, they started showing the incomplete. Uh, digestive system cephalization we have seen and there is a sense sense organs we started seeing you know one pair of eyes can be seen in free form okay the many structures okay in case of the um, regeneration power all these things are very important in when coming to the nematic helminthes the pseudocoelom how this uh, pseudocoelomic fluid is actually working as a skeletal system in as a hydrostatic skeleton and tube in tube the complete elementary canal and sexual dimorphism in male and female we started seeing this even the body wall there is a three distinct layer that is epidermis and the um, middle uh, outer cutaneous layer cuticle layer then the inner muscular layer we started seeing the first time the longitudinal muscles on the body wall okay so the nervous system also very developed in case of the nematic helminthes the circular the, the circumpharyngeal nerve ring and it is continued ventrally as a nerve cord now this is a very unique uh, phylum so that is uh, keep evolving for the further phylums okay hope you understand so we'll continue tomorrow